Sup, sup, everyone. Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be talking about old characters, rerun characters. You know, those have come and gone, come and gone many, many times. With the number of characters available for people to choose from nowadays, it's very easy to reach a point of decision paralysis. And I have people who are still constantly asking me, especially newer players who came into the game a couple months ago, what should I be doing? What kind of reruns should I be hunting for? So this video is talking about those rerun characters that you should really, really be looking out for. Now, here are some rules. We're not going to be talking about Archons because Archons are a different breed of characters. Most of the time, if an Archon is rerunning, it's a good idea to pick one up with the exception of one of them. And I'm pretty sure most of you guys know who I'm talking about. And yes, for those who are new who don't know who I'm talking about, that's Venti. If you want to pick up Venti, it's fine. That's up to you. But I can assure you, if you're a newer player who has been playing the game for less than a year, there are likely better units that you could be using your resources towards. But if you like him, you want to get him, be my guest, right? I'm not here to tell you how to play your game. I'm just telling you there are certain characters in the game that you should really try to get your hands on to enhance your Genshin experience. So without further ado, name is Walrus. Make sure to subscribe if you like this type of content and let's get into the video. Starting with honorable mentions, Kokomi is a character a lot of people really could consider, especially since she is a Catalyst user. She is a Hydro applicator. She's great. Now, a lot of people who would say Kokomi is not worth your time is those who already have great other Hydro applicators or feel like that someone like Barbara, someone like Mona could fill her role just as well, right? You're missing a little bit here and there. Mona, you're missing the healing and Barbara is missing the consistent off-field Hydro application. And both people think are play aroundable, if that's a word. So Kokomi is an honorable mentions. Then let us move straight into fifth place, which is going to be Mr. Worldwide, Tartaglia. I think Tartaglia is a great character that most people, if you're new, should be looking to invest into. And there's a good reason for this. I'll touch on it a little later in the video. Yes, it has something to do with another character and how Abyss is actually developing and being designed nowadays. Remember, we're not talking about Archon. So again, just to let you guys know, be like, how can this guy put yeah, right no archons no four stars this is just strictly five star limited characters tartaglia being number five being hydro being one of the most flexible characters in the entire game tartaglia has been a character that has stayed among staples of staple and i don't foresee him going anywhere anytime soon the team that you can play around with him has eerie similarities to some of the other really op teams in the game such as Raiden national so his value speaks for itself the reason he's at number five is because he's a dps character and you never really know with DPS characters. Once the meta shifts, it almost never will go back to them. Look at it from the perspective of characters like Eula. You understand that there will be times where certain DPS characters shines and there will be times when they really struggle. And for Tartaglia, he has been able to shine, shine, and shine again. And there's a reason why he's regarded as Mr. Worldwide. It's because for some reason, Hoyoverse has decided to leave this character mostly untouched. So if you guys are looking for a strong carry, picking up Tartaglia is going to be a smart move. Moving on to number four, and that's going to be Ayaka. The reason I talked about Tartaglia at number five, saying I'm going to talk about him again, is because of Ayaka. Ayaka being at number four is because oftentimes you'll find Ayaka and Tartaglia covers one half of the abyss each. So it's either Ayaka first half, Tartaglia second half, or Tartaglia second half and Ayaka first half. And both of these characters don't fight for four star supports with each other. So they're actually a great duo combo to run. And you'll see a lot of CN players oftentimes will use both of these characters to clear abyss. And if you just invest into these two characters, you can clear probably 80 to 90% of the Abyss 36 stars, mostly no problem. There will be some odd Abysses where you're going to have to bring out other characters to facilitate, but these two characters are really good together. And for all beginner players, I think if you just invest into these two characters, most of Abyss will be a non-issue. And once Abyss becomes a non-issue, you essentially have cleared the game. So think of it as like a small cheat code if you build out Ayaka and Tartaglia. And another really good bonus for both of these characters is there are really decent free-to-play weapon options. Now, I'm not saying that free-to-play weapon options are the best for these characters. No, no, no. Ayaka gains a lot of stats from Miss Litter, but just letting you know, great free-to-play options as well. So if you are worried, oh, what if I need their weapons? Nope, both of these characters don't necessarily need their weapons, although it would be nice to have, but it's really a luxury. Unlike certain other DPS characters, which would really, really prefer to have their signature weapons, Ayaka and Tartaglia do not. Moving into number three, Nilu. This character, I think, needs very little introduction for people who have played the game throughout Sumeru. We'll likely know that if you go ask 
most content creators or most meta players who is a really good five star character. It's Nilu. I think still to this day, Nilu is arguably the most budget friendly five star character you can get for your account. And she builds off of the structure of Dendro and Hyper Bloom. So it's no surprise when I tell you that Nilu combined with three other free to play characters can hard carry the abyss, especially when it favors her. The one downside with Nilu is she has really high fluctuations when it comes to usage rates because when it comes to a bunch of mobs everywhere and waves of mobs, she's really good because she has close to no CD. As long as you can proc her super blooms, they just activate. There's not like, oh, you gotta wait 15 seconds. Like characters such as Eula, you use her burst. Even if you can get all the energy back, you're gonna have to wait for the CD to finish. Nilu doesn't have that problem. So she's really good at dealing with waves and waves of mobs or a bunch of mobs, but she does struggle a little bit more when it comes to bosses. Now, immediately people will be like, Walrus, she doesn't struggle against bosses. What I really mean to say is there are superior options to her when it comes to bossing like Ayaka. Ayaka will crush bosses oftentimes much faster than Nilu can, hence making Nilu's usage rate. I know a lot of people really hate this as well, but yes, her usage rate does fluctuate quite a lot when it comes to end game content. But why is Nilu then still above Ayaka and Tartaglia? And the reason is because she's really cheap to play. She's cheap and strong and she has decent ceiling, meaning that yes, you can play her very cheaply. She comes online with close to no resources, yet she still has a long way to go to reach her ceiling. So ultimately, if you want to play Nilu, you can invest into her short term and long term and her ceiling is quite respectable, especially with Hoyoverse kind of having a hard on nowadays for these multi wave mob content for Abyss. Nilu is eating very well. And like I said before, it's not like she can't do bosses. It's just there are better options. So meaning if you are tight and have very little budget, getting a Nilu actually could help you solve bossing issues as well. Plus she's a character that scales off of HP. So in clutch situations, you can always just swap the Nilu to face tank. So for people who struggles with mechanics and stuff, Nilu oftentimes could just absorb a lot of mistakes. So really great option. I place her at number three. Pick one up if you do have the budget to spare. Number two is going to be Yelan. Now, I don't think this is coming as a surprise to anybody. So number one, veteran players would already know who it is. Yelan being at number two, I think Yelan has really been a staple among staples as well. Even though she has only been around for about like what, a little over a year. She's amazing, superb character. She does everything you would want a Hydro off your support DPS to do and then some. Another great thing about Yelan is She's great with a free to play weapon. Have you guys noticed all of these characters have something in similar is that they can be played to near perfection with their free to play weapons. And for a lot of Yelans, actually, they would prefer to run her with a free to play weapon. Well, not a free to play weapon, but like a four star weapon. So I guess it's kind of unfair to say that it's free to play friendly, but a Favonius bow is really, really beneficial when you're playing Yelan. And oftentimes before you even get C1, you would want to stick with your Favonius bow because it's just gonna flow better with the rest of your team and how she plays. She has great damage, a decent health pool, great mobility, and she's Hydra, which is like immediately skyrocketing her above a bunch of other characters. Plus, she has a buffing mechanic built into her burst skill, allowing the rest of your team to do even more damage even though she's not on field. I can't highlight how important it is right now for characters to not take up field time. Just do your thing and get off the field. Yelan wastes almost no time on the field. Every second, every half a second, every microsecond she's on the field, she's getting something done. Either it's reducing the distance between you and mobs or helping you generate particles, or she's using her burst to then set up the rest of the team to do more damage. She is great. And there's a reason why people love Yelan because she's not just a character built for abyss and combat. Her elemental skill allows you to traverse the overworld very easily and people just can't get enough of her armpits. I mean, people can't get enough of this character. So she's that number two. So who is number one? All right, let's say it all together. Three, two, one. It's still Venti. I'm kidding. It's Kazuha. There's a reason this guy just never seems to leave any tier list in there. I don't think he's ever been contested in the top three spot. I think there have been times where people think Kazuha has dropped off a little bit, but when it comes to limited five-star characters and value, Kazuha is definitely up there. I don't think Bokoeber is going to do anything about him anytime soon. And the main reason is because he buffs elemental damage like straight up out the butt cheeks. 
with exceptions to Dendro, Anemo, and Geo. All other elemental damage, Kazuha is your guy. And I think when it comes to elemental damage and teams, Hoiver still has a lot of room to play with, so he's not going away anytime soon. He has very good CC, he has easy to use skill combos, and another really, really good thing about him is you can use 4-star weapons with him, and he's incredible with 4-star weapons. I would even argue 4-star weapons until you get higher constellations is going to be better on him than his signature weapon. I know, I know, that's not true. But personally, when it comes to Kazuha, I really enjoy his utility and the amount of support he brings to the team, not just in damage and buffing, but also in grouping. And believe it or not, particle generation. I think he's amazing. So with all that said, I don't think Kazuha needs any more padding. All these characters are amazing at C0. You don't need to get constellations. You don't need to get their signature weapons. It's just picking up the character. And at C0, they're already pretty much kitted out and ready to go. And for people who are looking to branch out into other characters, other compositions, these five characters are going to provide you, in my opinion, some of the best value in the game for what you can get at C0 with four-star weapons or free-to-play weapons. With that all said, because we're watching comment down below what you guys think are the best characters for free to play for early game players when they're just getting into the game and until next time urge you to stay safe peace peace bye bye